Welcome back friends to another Bolo vs video. This is the series where I take your suggestions and pit various marks and units of Bolos against various sci-fi franchises to see how they stack up. This week I take the suggestion of longtime viewer and top fan George. He wanted to see Bolos face off against the aliens from Independence Day 2 because of course he did. Now I thought I was jumping the shark right off the hop with a pilot episode Warhammer 40k. Well shocking exactly no one, I was wrong. You guys almost seem to want a geometric progression in the size of the bad guys I throw at Bolos. So I can only imagine some smart ass is going to request Unicron next. I'll nip this right in the bud right now. Every Bolo from the Mark 15 onward could wipe the floor with the entire Transformers universe. Full stop. Period. End of discussion. So, moving on, we are going to pit a Malconian War-sized battle group of 33s against a Harvester Mothership. Because of course we are. Yep, we're gonna do this. So, first we're going to look at the Harvester Aliens from Independent Day Resurgence. Yep, and I swear I won't spend the entire video shitting on this creatively bankrupt excuse for an alien antagonist. Only maybe 40% of this video will be spent crapping on the blockbuster big bads who were dreamed up by a coke-fueled 8-year-old. Now, given that there's only one movie to draw on lore for this particular enemy, we're going to make a lot of inferences and reasonable guesses on their power outputs and shields and deployment strategies. No, we're not. Not even close. And you'll see why shortly. First up is the scale of their ships, which is beyond ridiculous. The Harvester Mothership is 4,828 kilometers in diameter. It's largely hollow inside. They possess an anti-kinetic deflector shield, EM pulse weapons, laser guided plasma disruptors, the hull is studded with anti-air plasma pulse turrets. Not that it matters anyways, these guys make Imperial Stormtroopers look like the silly sights have. The scores of fighters they deploy are also armed with deflector shields and rapid fire pulse plasma weapons, again with the exact same marksmanship issues. The massive plasma of harvester drill it's got, again it's, don't even get me started. Based on what I've seen in the movies, the shield on these ships are non-regenerating. They only seem to be able to sustain a fixed amount of damage before failing. Their ships are essentially continent-sized mobile civilizations based on hive minds. And that's as much a strength as a weakness. Yeah, you can change a whole army strategy on a dime, but you kill the queen and the hive collapses. Pretty glaring weakness if you ask me. Don't even get me started on their piss-poor network security of their ships, holy Christ. And as we all know by now, how extraordinarily OP the Mark 33 Bolos are. They possess the firepower of entire armies in a single 32,000 ton unit, and the Harvesters are going to be against eight of these. Because I want them to. Even a single fire team would wipe the floor with this Harvester mothership in a myriad of ways. So instead of the usual battle that I'd craft in a elaborate scenario, and try to keep even odds, and make this a little more fun for padded watch time, I'm just going to present you with four scenarios about how the Bolos would just be able to smack the Harvesters around, and why. Scenario 1. The Bolos detect the Mothership approaching. They wait till the Mothership enters maximum kill range, and pour concentrated fire overwhelming the shields and gut the power core of the ship. This leaves the ship arrested and stuck in geostationary orbit, and Cordiette tugs push the ship into the sun. Scenario 2. The Bolos detect the Harvester approaching orbit, and probe the ship electronically. Noticing a complete lack of security, they seize control of the ship systems, drive the ship right into the sun, right after locking every door and airlock on the ship, and venting all the atmosphere. Seeing a pattern here, friends? Scenario 3. The Bolos allow the harvesters to land for shits and giggles. They use their anti-gravity systems to fly up onto the leg adjacent to the head of the ship, and proceed to advance up what appears to be towards the hangar bay, firing their main weapons on full continuous, smashing through their shields and the closed doors of the ship, only to be swarmed by hordes of fighters. Their PDF and lateral batteries on overdrive, they smash the harvester ground forces before they can even deploy. The queen ship's attempts to escape, and it's going to get shot out of the sky before it even leaves orbit. Scenario 4. Again, the Bolos let the harvester land for shits and giggles. They advance up the outer hull of the alien ship, surround what they assume is the command core, and begin to carve open the hull of the ship. They spend exactly three thousandths of a second arguing amongst themselves who's going to clean the queen's smeared corpse out of their own treads. Now, 
I know this video wasn't as elaborate or as long as my first two Bolo versus videos. I really, really, really wanted to give these adversaries a fair shake, but they're failure incarnate. By their very definition, they're a Kardashev one type civilization. In theory, they should be able to steamroll humanity without even breaking a sweat or barely even noticing we exist. Instead, what we have is a giant steaming pile of failed potential and shame. There isn't a single redeeming quality about the Harvesters other than the sheer scale of their ships, and that isn't even so redeeming when they lack any sort of consistency regarding the physics surrounding it. While well, in the Bolo universe, it just simply makes them obscenely large and easy targets. Their fire rates are abysmal, their power outputs are not commensurate with the scale and size of their ships, maneuverability of their fighters are subpar given their supposed technological advancement, and their network security can be defeated by a laptop whose only claim to fame is the ability to randomly catch fire. Media Zealot might have been correct in calling them a half asters because I'm pretty sure the business end of Roland Emmerich's crack pipe is blisteringly hot to the touch when he contrived of this antagonist. Anyways friends, I will ask if you enjoyed this video leave a like and sub down below, leave a comment, tell me who you want to see them face off next and I swear I'll actually put some more effort into it, I promise. And if you think I was just phoning in at this time, smash that dislike button. Apparently YouTube thinks that it doesn't matter anyway. With that, guys, peace out.